President Muhammad Buhari rejects Electoral Act Amendment Bill, says imposing direct primaries will cause trouble in political parties. And the court nullifies Andrew Bass candidacy in Anambra election, orders the ABC to refund Jod Mogolu's 22.5 million naira. This is Cross Politics. I am Mary Anakon. President Muhammad Buhari has declined accent, or assent, I beg your pardon, to the 2021 Electoral Act Amendment Bill, stating that signing into law uh, would cause trouble among the political parties in the country. The president also refused to assent to it against the backdrop that the parties have their various constitutions that indicate that primaries should be conducted either directly or indirectly, and until such provisions are amended, asking parties to do so through direct means would mean forcing the parties to conduct primaries through direct means, which according to the president, um, amount to abuse of the constitution of the party. The president had asked the lawmakers to look at the direct primaries by political parties clause, walk on it and return the document for assent. Well, joining us to discuss this is Honorable Rima Shawulu. He's a member of the House of Representatives. And, of course, we have James Ebor. He's a legal practitioner. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. All right. Thank I'm, you. I'm going to start with you, Mr. Rima. It's interesting because every single person, all eyes were on Mr. President, as at the weekend, hoping to hear if the president was going to append his signature or not. And conversations that... Um, were coming from different, you know, quarters where that, or oh, the president was standing in the way of the democratic process. Some people even said uh, they were hoping that the National Assembly would override Mr. President. But here we are. The president has returned this document back to the National Assembly. For the, for, for the House of Representatives, what's the next step? Well, uh, the, the House leadership that is the presiding officer of the house I said the matter will be uh, discussed when uh, the house resumes early next year so for now it simply means that nothing can happen during this holiday uh, everybody is quiet everybody will wait until the house resumes however I do know that the senate had a robust debate today and decided that it will resume tomorrow to continue and maybe end the debate. So one or two things will, will, will may happen. The first one is that uh, the House will be under pressure if the Senate tomorrow decides to override the veto of the President. You know, Nigeria is a bicameral institution. Legislature is bicameral. Yes. Both chambers have to agree before anything happens. So if the House, if the Senate decides to uh, go ahead with uh, overriding the presidential veto, then uh, the House will have to sit down to consider it along that way. If, on the other hand, the Senate decides not to override the veto, it will simply mean that the matter is dead, that the president has had his way, which people have been suspecting he will. Uh, because as you have read from several commentaries, uh, people have commented, Nigerians believe that the Ninth Assembly does not have the capacity and is not willing to do anything other than what the president says the uh, National Shalo, Assembly I'm sorry, should do. It's very difficult to hear you, so I'm going to try again to see. I, I don't know if you can speak up because we can't really hear you. Yeah, I was saying that as it is now, uh, not much can be done again because the House has decided to go on recess yes, until the 18th of January. The Senate had a robust debate today 
and will continue the debate tomorrow. If the Senate decides tomorrow to go ahead with the overriding, the process of, of overriding, taking a vote to override the president, mm -hmm. then there will be pressure on the House to do the same. But if the Senate does not do that, the pressure from Nigerians will be upon the whole National Assembly. The fact of the matter is that even though Nigerians do expect that the National Assembly will take some actions, not many people believe that the Ninth Assembly has the capacity or the will to take such action as to veto the, uh, as to override the veto of the president. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious, many of your colleagues and lawmakers have gone on uh, holiday. Uh, how is it possible that there will be a quorum if, the, if, it, if it be the case tomorrow that um, the Senate decides that they're going to take a, a different position? How do you get a quorum in the House of Representatives to make sure that whatever decision you want to take is taken? The House of Representatives is not going to sit again until January. The Senate... Uh, is going to meet and these are simply con simply constitutional procedures the national assembly votes by votes to override the presidential any presidential veto by two thirds of the members of national assembly so the question of quorum does not arise it's not two thirds of those who are present and voting but to touch of all the members of the National Assembly, in the case of Senate, for instance, okay. uh, uh, to touch of the 109 members. In the case of House, House of Representatives, we are talking about 240 members uh, decide voting to override the president's veto. If 239 members vote to override the president's veto, that will not stand. It means that the veto has succeeded. We will require 240 votes. And so you just need one member of the House to make up, to give those that don't want 121 votes. Hmm. And if, if we get 121 votes uh, agreeing with the president, then it means that the president's veto has uh, succeeded. I want to push you further, being that you're, you are also part of this. Um, when the National Assembly was agreeing on this issue of direct primaries, we know that there were, you know, there was a lot of back and forth as to agreements and disagreements. And you are all party men. You all know what the constitutions of your different parties say. Why did the House and the Senate unanimously or push or vote for this, knowing that it's, it might be a, a clog in the, uh, you know, in the wheels of the democratic process? And lots of people have also said that we probably are not ready for it or ripe enough for it. So why did the House even go in these routes in the first place? Well, my view about it is that I think the ruling or progressive Congress is playing games on the intelligence of Nigerians. The fact of the matter is that the president and the PAPC, in my opinion, are not interested in reforming the electoral system. If they were interested in, in reforming the electoral system, we will not today be talking about amending the 2010 Electoral Act. Mind you, the act that we're talking about now is the one that was drafted under, the, under President Goodluck Jonathan, 2010. Since that time, up to now, we are talking about how many years? We are talking about nearly eight years, seven years. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are... Again, because in my opinion, the APC is not prepared to for the 2023 elections. And so it does not want us to have an electoral system that will clean up our elections. It is interested in the old ways that they can write results from all parts of the country or the parts that they think they control or the parts that they think have security challenges. So that as, much as, as, as much as I want to agree that. with you, um, uh, um, it's, it's very interesting. This same um, paper, piece, piece of document that you're referring to, has the electronic transfer of results. 
And when you say that they're not necessarily interested in um, cleaning up our democratic process, but they're part of the people who have also signed on to this document. So I, I'm, I'm trying, I'm finding it difficult to believe what you're saying. Oh, no, no, no. You, you, if, if, they, if, if they had signed up to the document, these issues were canvassed in the Eighth Assembly. And the president several times vetoed on the basis of mere spellings of spellings in the uh, amendment in the in the in the electoral proposed electoral act amendment the president vetoed the electoral act several times he got to a stage that he said that it was too late for uh, any amendment to the electoral act to be undertaken now if you look at what has happened now the apc controlled senate actually from the beginning decided that there should be no electronic transfer, a, a, a transmission of election results. It was a pressure that was brought to bear on the system by Nigerians that made the Senate to backtrack. Mm. And in the, in the House, there was so much debate and walkout on the basis of the fact that the APC members did not want to have anything that would automate and ease in the process of election. They would have preferred some even they even brought people from the uh, uh from some agencies to come and lie on earth that nigeria did not have the capacity to conduct to to transmit election election results from all parts of the country and these things were disputed and they were found to be false mm. so those are not actions by people who are interested in reforming the electoral system if the president and the APC were interested in reforming the electoral system, the way they pushed the PIB, uh, the Petroleum Industry Act, they would have done the same to the ele 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 Electoral Act Amendment. But they are not interested. Hmm. And the game that is going in now is, is to make sure that by the time the president will say he has agreed with what has taken place, uh, they will say again that it is too late. For him to sign the, the 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 act i want to assure you that even if the two chambers of the national assembly today had agreed that they will remove the issues of uh, the issue of direct or indirect primaries and transmitted same to the president the president will still write back to raise some issues about the 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 amendments in the electoral act and push it to the time that he will say, no, it is too late to um, Mr. Shawalu, I think we lost connection with you, but let me come to James um, Ibo. Uh, J James, as an outsider looking in, um, the, the Honourable Member has made a lot of allegations against the ruling party, and, and he's called it a game of sorts to wiggle their way out of having free, fair, and credible elections come 2023. What's your take on that? Yes, I agree in all fours with Honorable Rima. In fact, um, he has actually extensively too um, exposed the fact that uh, the disposition of the Ninth Assembly in, uh, uh, is that they are not going to pass the uh, override the presidential uh, veto. Um, and uh, from what he said is in tandem with uh, his fears were confirmed uh, this morning by the Senate president, who, who was uh, defending the president and justifying the president's action. I, I, I was, it was so frustrating listening to the Senate president, our Senate president, you know, defending and refusing to defend the position of the Ninth Assembly, but rather defending the reasons or justifying the reasons for the presidential veto. That clearly shows that this very Ninth Assembly, it is, is not ready to override the presidential veto. Mm -hmm. um, this is the holiday period. We are mobilizing with the young people of Nigeria. We are mobilizing to confront our um, um, representatives in our constituencies. If they are ready to run elections, if they are willing to run elections in 2023, they will either veto the presidential, um, override the presidential veto, or just 
forget about their political ambition. I think it has come to that point where we have to insist that the right thing be done. Imagine the president's letter as explained by the Senate president that it will be too expensive, that it will, it will, it will strain security agencies, it will cause insecurity. How? He's also In the made it, but the president century, has also made a point saying that this would cause some form of confusion within the political parties, being that these political parties, be it the APC or the PDP or the or APCA, have a constitution, a rule book that they follow through. And in those rule books, especially for the PDP and the APC, there are different ways to go about their primaries. There's a direct, indirect, and then there's a consensus candidate. And so if, that, if this law has to be uh, imposed, then they have to revisit um, their own constitutions to amend it. Isn't that a, a, a case that the president is making? Does it not hold water? Yeah, that defense is lame and ridiculous. It is ridiculous. We are the the act of the National Assembly is superior to any party constitution or rules. When once the National Assembly makes a law, every other instrument, every other association like political parties, is compelled to align their positions, not to contradict the act of the National Assembly. So. Uh, let's not even talk about that. I, I, whoever advised the president to use that as an excuse has misled Mr. President. And if I'm in the position of Mr. President, I will sack whoever gave me that advice. Because it is shameful that Mr. President will give that excuse that he means he's saying the Act of National Assembly is subject to the constitutions of political parties. Uh, please, we can't, we can't accept that. Remember, we are in the 20th, uh, 21st century. We just launched 5G. When we talk about direct primaries, it can also be electronic. The, the constitution, the, the, the uh, proposed uh, bill also talk about electronic voting. Political parties can vote uh, um, uh, uh, directly using an electronic means of doing that, which is cheaper and without any security risk, provided the process the electronic platform adopted is guaranteed, is uh, reliable. Because remember, most of these um, companies providing these services ensure that they are footprints. It will also reduce the cost of litigation. Look at what has happened to Andy Uber um, uh, today, uh, yesterday, yes. when uh, Justice Echo made the judgment. You know, I was just listening uh, to it this afternoon. Uh, maybe if there was electronic, uh, if, if, if there was direct primaries and electronic voting, that would have been avoided. And the Uber, maybe, imagine, imagine the cost, the investment by the APC, and assuming and the Uber even won the elections, you can imagine the position, the confusion that this would have thrown the people of Anambra states. Hmm. Interesting. I, I want to quickly run something by you, and I'll ask the same question to the Honourable Member before I, I let you go. INEC is, is insisting, as at yesterday, they're insisting that um, on this issue of the Electoral Act Bill, um, that they're going to, in fact, they're saying they must use technology uh, for the elections. I'm going to tell you the case that they're making. The INEC chairman, Professor Makbudi Akubu, uh, said this on Tuesday uh, during a meeting with you know, resident electoral commissioners. Uh, he said that... Um, they need to use the beavers, which is very important. We saw how the beavers malfunctioned a little bit in Anambra, but then, of course, when they fixed it, it was up and running, and it was very fast. They're saying that, look, technological innovation is very important for the elections. They're talking about uploading these election results. They're saying that it would ease the process in its entirety and, you know, push out all of these um, issues that we point to, ballot box snatching, and of course, the violence that take place, uh, takes place in these um, polling units, uh, they're insisting against what you know, is happening on, uh, in, uh, on the floor of the National Assembly. And of course, what Mr. President's letter is saying, INEX still is standing its ground, saying that they must use technology uh, during the elections. But looking at all of this, and, and of course the allegations that are being made as to the game that the national, um, the party, the, lead, the party at the national level, which is the APC, uh, is doing, um, do you think that INEC might be able to explore this technological aspect of running our elections? I mean, the Beavers have been allowed into the process, but of course we're still waiting for the e-transmission of results. 
Yes, you see, INEC will not um, act in isolation. Of course, they will act in accordance with uh, the Electoral Act, which itself defines uh, or determines the electoral processes from party to the actual, from party primaries to the actual election. So, um, INEC insistence um, is uh, neither here nor there. We, we are looking for, we want the president to sign, I mean, the National Assembly at this stage now to veto the uh, uh, to override the presidential veto so that INEC will be able to deploy technology in our elections we saw clearly what happened in Anambra state where power now was given to the people it made no sense for anybody to go bribing political agents or INEC officials as you know it is difficult to bribe everybody and people freely rejected monies because power has been given to the people to determine their fate. That will also happen in political parties if direct primaries are allowed. And these direct primaries, political parties who are sincere, who want to actually um, 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 have democratic uh, primaries, mm -hmm. um, will ensure that they use electronic uh, means of direct primaries, voting. Okay. Okay. where members, accredited members of a political party can even vote in the comfort of their room. Those votes are validated and counted and monitored by INEC. Okay. It, it is cost-effective. It will reduce rancor. In fact, it will reduce insecurity. So okay. every fear Mr. President has expressed is the direct opposite of what we are going to achieve. It is cheaper okay. to deploy technology in direct All primaries right. than than the delegate elections where they put people in hotels, pay them money, and they go against the will of members of okay. the political party. Because we're almost out of time, let me toss back to the honorable member in closing. INEC is, just like, as I said, is insisting that the introduction of technology uh, into the voter accreditation and results management will be way better than the manual process that has been done over the years. What is the People's Democratic Party? I know that you're the minority right now, uh, but what would you do to push for this? Because it seems, if INEC seems to be on the same page with the PDP, which is very interesting, um, it means that the people might also be open to this particular move if it be done. So how does the PDP hope to push uh, the hand of both the party uh, in leadership and, of course, the hand of Mr. President? Well, uh, I don't think there's any way we, uh, the president's hands can be, can, can be moved is for him to look at his conscience, look at his history, look see what legacy he wants to leave behind. If you look at the legacy of President Goodluck Jonathan, in spite of the fact that he lost the 2015 elections, he is still regarded across the country and worldwide as a credible person because he allowed the use of technology that that facilitated the victory of President Muhammadu Buhari. If Muhammadu Buhari, the president, will now come and use the ladder that made him president and destroy it, so be it. There isn't anything that anybody can do about it. But I will appeal to him and the people around him to note the fact that he has a debt with history. What legacy does he want to be left behind? What does he want to be remembered? As somebody who brought Nigeria down the line or somebody who improved, Jonathan, who improved Nigeria. Okay. And uh, in spite of the fact that he lost the president, the presidential election, uh, President Goodluck Jonathan is widely accepted around the world today for the singular act of conducting an election that was regarded as credible. Now, to answer your question directly, the PDP introduced technology. And the fact of the matter is that election should not be about winning. It should be about a process. Mm. And that is why credible, the major test for a credible election. Uh, I think that we have lost the connection with um, Honorable Rima. But uh, Honorable Rima Shawalu is a member in the House of Representatives uh, representing Tankum Donga Federal Constituency. And of course, James Ebor is a legal practitioner. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. Coming up on Plus Politics, the court nullifies Andy Uba's candidacy in Anambra's election. 
orders the APC to refund George Mogalu's 22.5 million naira. But well, we'll take a short break now. When we come back, more on Plus Politics.